kindness paradox, can being too nice actually hurt you? We're all wired for connection. From the moment we're born, we crave acceptance and belonging. This primal need fuels our desire to be kind, to be generous with our time, understanding of others' struggles, and gentle in our interactions. The world, after all, throws enough curveballs, the least we can do is offer a kind word and a helping hand. Imagine a world where kindness reigns supreme, where every interaction is coated in a thick layer of sugary sweetness. Sounds delightful, doesn't it? But hold on a moment. What if this relentless pursuit of being nice starts to feel more like a suffocating mask, one that we're compelled to wear even when it feels uncomfortable? Picture this, you're smiling through gritted teeth, nodding along to conversations that make you want to roll your eyes, all in the name of being nice. But here's the kicker, could this constant pressure to be nice actually backfire on us? Think about it. When we're so focused on maintaining this facade of kindness, are we truly being authentic? Are we allowing ourselves to express our true feelings and opinions, or are we burying them deep beneath layers of pleasantries? It's like trying to hold back a raging river with a flimsy dam, eventually, something's bound to give. So, what's the solution? Perhaps it's time to redefine what it means to be kind. Maybe kindness isn't about plastering on a fake smile or suppressing our true selves. Instead, it could be about genuine empathy, understanding, and respect. It's about being honest with ourselves and others, even if it means being a little less nice sometimes. After all, true kindness stems from authenticity, not from wearing a mask of perpetual niceness. Finding the right balance between being genuinely kind and feeling compelled to please everyone is like navigating a maze with invisible walls. It's a delicate dance where one misstep can lead to unintended consequences. Welcome to the world of the kindness paradox, where being overly agreeable can sometimes do more harm than good. It's like trying to juggle too many balls at once, sooner or later, something's bound to drop. So, what's the deal with this kindness paradox? Picture this, you're bending over backward to accommodate everyone's needs and desires, all in the name of being kind. But here's the twist, in the process, you're neglecting your own well-being and sacrificing your authenticity on the altar of niceness. It's like trying to fill a leaky bucket with water, no matter how much you pour in, it keeps draining away. But fear not, dear traveler in the land of kindness. There's light at the end of the tunnel. The key lies in finding that sweet spot where kindness flows naturally, without sacrificing your own boundaries and authenticity. It's about learning to say no when necessary, setting healthy boundaries, and prioritizing self-care without feeling guilty. So, the next time you find yourself caught in the web of the kindness paradox, remember, it's okay to be kind, but it's also okay to be kind to yourself. The Boundaries of Courtesy Picture yourself in a tight-knit circle of friends, where one person's choices seem to create ripples of chaos that affect everyone. You witness the fallout, but a knot forms in your stomach at the thought of speaking out. Why? Because confrontation feels like a betrayal of your innate kindness. The mere idea of conflict sends shivers down your spine, fearing it could rupture the bonds you've built and leave behind a trail of hurt feelings. It's a classic conundrum, staying silent to preserve harmony versus risking it all for the greater good. You're caught between a rock and a hard place, grappling with the fear of rocking the boat and the guilt of watching silently from the sidelines. It's like being stuck in quicksand, each step sinking you deeper into the quagmire of indecision. But here's the kicker, burying your concerns beneath layers of niceness only perpetuates the cycle of dysfunction. By avoiding confrontation, you inadvertently enable the behavior that's causing harm. It's like trying to douse a fire by ignoring it, eventually, the flames will consume everything in their path. So, the next time you find yourself torn between silence and speaking up, remember this, true kindness isn't always about avoiding conflict, sometimes, it's about having the courage to confront it for the sake of everyone involved. The irony is that no one benefits when silence is maintained in this situation. By avoiding conflict, you may think that you are being kind, but in actuality, all you are doing is brushing the problem under the rug and allowing the undesirable behavior to go unchecked. True friendship isn't just about sunshine and rainbows, it's about weathering the storms together, even if it means having those tough conversations that sting like a bee. Think of it this way, by biting your tongue, you're not shielding your friend from harm, you're handing them a free pass to keep making the same mistakes. It's like watching a friend walk straight into a pothole and saying nothing, sure, you're avoiding a potentially awkward moment, but at what cost? You're sacrificing the chance to help them course correct and grow. So, when the going gets tough, it's time to summon your inner courage and speak up. Yes, it might be uncomfortable in the moment, and yes, there might be some hurt feelings along the way. But real friendships aren't built on a foundation of silence, they thrive on honesty, even when it's hard to hear. So, don't let fear hold you back from being a true friend. 
Speak your truth, and trust that your friendship will emerge stronger on the other side. But wait, the kindness conundrum isn't confined to just friend circles, it sneaks its way into the workplace too. Picture this, you're drowning in tasks, buried under a mountain of work that seems to multiply by the minute. Why? Because saying, no, feels like dropping a bomb, too harsh, too confrontational. So, you keep piling on the workload, sacrificing your own sanity at the altar of niceness. And here's where it gets tricky, by being a perpetual, yes, person, you're not just harming yourself, you're setting the stage for a workplace disaster. Burnout becomes your constant companion, resentment simmers beneath the surface, and before you know it, the quality of your work takes a nosedive. It's like trying to sprint a marathon, sure, you might keep up the pace for a while, but eventually, exhaustion sets in, and you're left gasping for breath. So, how do you break free from this vicious cycle? It's time to embrace the power of boundaries. Saying, no, doesn't make you a bad person, it makes you human. It's about recognizing your limits, prioritizing your well-being, and reclaiming control over your workload. Sure, it might feel uncomfortable at first, but trust me, the temporary discomfort is a small price to pay for long-term peace of mind and professional satisfaction. The worst thing about being too kind is that it doesn't stem from being misguided in your goodness, rather, it stems from forgetting where you stop and other people start. It's like living under such a thick garment of civility that you lose sight of what it feels like to stand erect on your own two feet. The real danger lies in letting your boundaries blur and your voice fade into the background noise. Imagine this, you're sailing along in the sea of life, but instead of steering your own ship, you're letting the waves of other people's expectations toss you around. It's a recipe for disaster, a collision course with self-doubt and resentment. You're so afraid of causing a ripple that you forget the importance of speaking up, even when it's uncomfortable. But here's the silver lining, it's never too late to reclaim your power. It's about finding the courage to draw a line in the sand, to say, this far, and no further. It's about recognizing that true kindness starts with being kind to yourself, setting boundaries, and honoring your own needs and desires. So, the next time you feel the urge to plaster on a smile and nod along, remember, your voice matters, your boundaries matter, and it's okay to rock the boat if it means staying true to yourself. The Marks of Unrestrained Goodness There's a hidden cost to constant niceness, one that manifests in several ways. Let's examine a typical situation, the doormat character. Picture someone whose kindness is like an open invitation for others to walk all over them. They're the ones who always seem to attract the takers, the ones who have a knack for exploiting their goodwill. It's like painting a target on their back and shouting, free ride this way. Here's the harsh truth, when you're a perpetual doormat, you're not just opening the door to opportunists, you're also inviting a heavy emotional burden to take up residence in your life. It's a toxic cycle of giving and giving until there's nothing left to give, leaving you feeling drained and depleted. But fear not, dear friend. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. It's about recognizing your own worth, standing up for yourself, and learning to say no without guilt. It's about reclaiming your power and drawing a line in the sand that says, enough is enough. So, the next time you feel like you're being taken advantage of, remember, you hold the key to your own happiness, and it's time to lock the door on anyone who tries to steal it away. Let's dive into a common pitfall, self-neglect. Imagine pouring all your energy into making others happy while neglecting the most important person in the room, yourself. It's like trying to water everyone else's garden while your own withers away from thirst. The consequence? You become a stranger to yourself, lost in the maze of pleasing others. Exhaustion becomes your constant companion, resentment festers beneath the surface, and the person staring back at you in the mirror feels like a distant memory. But here's the twist, it doesn't have to be this way. It's about flipping the script, putting yourself back in the spotlight where you belong. It's about recognizing that self-care isn't selfish, it's essential. So, the next time you feel like you're drowning in the sea of others' expectations, remember, you're the captain of your own ship, and it's time to steer towards self-love and fulfillment. Let's talk about a common stumbling block, distrust? Picture someone who's always coating their opinions in sugar, never showing their true colors. It's like trying to see through fog, you're left wondering what lies beneath the surface. This habit of constant sweetening can leave a sour taste in others' mouths, breeding distrust like weeds in a neglected garden. The result? It becomes challenging to form genuine connections when authenticity feels like a rare gem buried beneath layers of pretense. It's like trying to build a sturdy bridge on shaky ground, no matter how hard you try, it's bound to crumble under the weight of uncertainty. But here's the twist, authenticity is the mortar that holds relationships together. It's about being honest, even when it's uncomfortable, and showing up as your true self, warts and all. So, the next time you feel tempted to sugarcoat your words, remember, 
genuine connections are built on a foundation of trust, and that starts with being true to yourself and others. Let's unpack a common trap, warped expectations. Imagine constantly putting others' happiness on a pedestal while neglecting your own needs. It's like chasing a mirage in the desert, the closer you get, the further true contentment seems to slip away. By consistently putting yourself last, you inadvertently set the stage for disappointment, painting yourself into a corner where others come to expect a level of selflessness that's simply unsustainable. The result? It's like trying to juggle flaming torches, eventually, something's going to go up in flames. You're left feeling drained, resentful, and utterly exhausted from trying to meet impossible standards. And the worst part? The harder you try to keep up the facade of endless selflessness, the further you drift from your own happiness. But here's the kicker, true fulfillment starts from within. It's about reclaiming your worth, setting boundaries, and prioritizing your own well-being without guilt. So, the next time you feel the weight of others' expectations bearing down on you, remember, your happiness is just as important as anyone else's, and it's time to give yourself permission to pursue it unapologetically. Finding the balance, being kind yet firm. Alas, the age-old dilemma, how can we balance compassion on a thin line without losing our balance and becoming self-sacrificing? A hint of wisdom and a deft touch are needed to maintain the delicate balance akin to trying to dance in the rain without getting wet. So, how do we unravel this paradox? How do we sprinkle kindness like confetti without losing ourselves in the process or morphing into a doormat? The answer lies in finding the sweet spot between compassion and self-preservation. It's about recognizing that true kindness isn't a one-way street, it's a dance of give and take where everyone's needs are honored, including your own. Think of it as tending to a garden, you nurture the blooms of kindness while also tending to the roots of your own well-being. But here's the kicker, it's okay to say no when necessary, to set boundaries, and to prioritize self-care without feeling guilty. It's about reclaiming your power and realizing that being kind doesn't mean being a pushover. It's about standing tall in your authenticity and shining your light in a way that uplifts others without dimming your own. So, the next time you find yourself at the crossroads of kindness and self-preservation, remember, you hold the compass to your own happiness, and it's time to navigate your journey with courage and compassion. Here are some key strategies. Know your values, what truly matters to you. Once you understand your core values, you can make decisions that align with them, even when they're not universally popular. Set healthy boundaries, learn to say no politely but firmly. It's okay to prioritize your own needs and well-being. Practice assertiveness, express your opinions and needs clearly and confidently. There's a difference between being assertive and being aggressive, you can be firm without being unkind. Embrace discomfort, difficult conversations are inevitable. Learn to tolerate a little short-term discomfort for the sake of long-term growth and healthy relationships. Focus on authenticity, be true to yourself. People are drawn to genuine connections, not masks of niceness. Keep this in mind, genuine kindness isn't about being a yes person all the time. It's about diving deep into the ocean of empathy, sprinkling compassion like confetti, and knowing when to draw the line to protect yourself and those around you. Think of it as a tapestry woven with threads of understanding, woven with the firm strands of your own boundaries. It's about standing tall, even when the winds of conflict blow fierce. True kindness isn't just about being a doormat, it's about being a beacon of authenticity in a world of pretense. It's about fostering connections that are as sturdy as oak trees, rooted in mutual respect and understanding. So, the next time you're tempted to bend over backward to earn someone's approval, remember, your worth isn't measured by the number of yes you utter, but by the depth of your compassion and the strength of your convictions. Ultimately, the kindness paradox teaches us that true character is forged in the fires of honesty and integrity. It's about striking a balance between kindness and self-respect, between empathy and assertiveness. By embracing this nuanced approach, we can cultivate a kindness that's both powerful and sustainable, one that strengthens our relationships and allows us to thrive in the world. I am Ryan.